Picking up with uh, trichomonas, we're still talking about sexually transmitted diseases. And trichomonas, 174 million people worldwide. You may not have heard of the, the, the trick, um, but uh, worldwide, obviously, that's 174 million people. It's a lot of people, so it is not certainly rare, uh, certainly not rare. Um, a protozoa is one of the weird things about this, or unusual things, I guess. Protozoa is this little, little fishy thing, or little, little thing that kind of swims around. If you look at it up here, the uh, other place that we may have seen a protozoa before is when we're talking about like Giardia, which is that little protozoa that swims around in, in water, and you get it from drinking uh, fresh mountain water, and. Uh, well, not necessarily fresh, but non-flowing mountain water, and you get giardia, and then it gives you diarrhea and that sort of thing. Well, trichomonas, even though it's a protozoa, you don't get it from drinking water. You get it from it's a sexually transmitted disease, where this little protozoa thing can uh, transfer from one person to the other through sexual contact. What's also uh, fairly unique about this is this really gray green frothy vaginal discharge okay so what's common a lot of times in sexually transmitted diseases is the male will be able to notice it because of a, a discharge fairly fast but the uh, female doesn't really get a lot of symptoms well this one with the female you do get the the grain green frothy discharge and it smells really bad very fishy okay it also causes swelling edema and a lot of itching so this is one of the uh, STDs that females pick up on really fast and they're like oh my gosh I have you know something going on anyway uh, on the other hand males may be asymptomatic so obviously it's important to uh, let the male know that they certainly have this if the male doesn't already know that okay testing uh, another KOH, um, potassium hydroxide sl uh, slide, but this also has a very specific whiff test. And uh, if I am not mistaken, they literally do kind of take the slide and they literally kind of smell it and they can smell that on the on the slide. But uh, anyway, uh, wet prep, you can actually see the little protozoa swimming around, like that's what that is up there in the picture. And uh, you rule out the other common uh, sexually transmitted diseases, Gardenella and Candida. Or, sorry, Candida is not a uh, sexually transmitted disease. That's the, that's the thrush, the yeast infection, because it also itches. Okay. Um, you can do the, uh, the rapid, rapid test for trichomonas. And it only takes about 10 minutes, so it's a pretty fast little test to get back. And treatment would be metronidazole. Metronidazole is a great little uh, drug that gets rid of all sorts of protozoas, um, including trichomonas. Trichomonas. Okay. Um, giardia. It works for giardia, that thing we were talking about too, that other protozoa. Continuing, continuing on with STDs, the most common STD, and I'll put an asterisk on that for a second at least, is uh, chlamydia. Okay, so chlamydia uh, trachomatis is uh, a very, very common, the clap, okay, people call it. So it's very common, like or unlike the uh, last one we were talking about with the protozoa, this one is a uh, is one that the male is typically well actually typically chlamydia uh, they can't they can be asymptomatic but usually they're not usually they have this um, inflammation of the urethra and they um, it hurts okay the females most of the time they are actually asymptomatic okay so this is the opposite like I said before uh, you can get abdominal pain and spotting from it, but most of the time, 80% of the time, females are asymptomatic for chlamydia, which is the most common STD, and uh, it's up to the male to tell the female that uh, about this uh, STD. Okay. 
and you can test it with urine sample or swab, just like it says there. Gonorrhea, also uh, fairly common. Okay, um, gonorrhea, again, an STD. And this one males identify really fast because there's a, a nasty yellow discharge that would come out of there. And uh, again, with females, 70% of the time, we are uh, talking about the female not even knowing that they have it. So again, there's a responsibility for the um, partners to let them know that they have it. Okay, not the best conversation you'll ever have, but there you have it. Problem is, is like chlamydia up here, um, you can actually get permanently infertile uh, by um, getting pelvic inflammatory disease and causing scarring that simply will never, you'll never be able to uh, have children um, because of the physical damage that it causes. Okay, now I put that little asterisk up here on chlamydia being the most common sexually transmitted disease. Kind of depends on on what you're defining as the most common STD because our genital warts are from condyloma acuminata is an STD due to HPV, which is human papillomavirus. Well, human papillomavirus, as uh, you may know, is also a very, very common STD. In fact, a lot of places you'll read that it's the most common STD. The uh, problem with that is there is, is possibility and, uh, and certainly some evidence that says that it isn't always a human papillomavirus, isn't always an STD. Okay, so um, you can get it without having multiple partners. So uh, what's it take here? Incubation period, um, we're talking about the STD part here. Uh, three weeks to a year to turn into a, a, a wart, three months on average to have a, a, a genital wart from human papillomavirus. Um, on the other hand, 90% of the HPV infection, the body gets rid of on its own within the first couple of years, okay? so. This is probably not one of your most aggressive STDs or viruses, for that matter, and, and any kind of any kind of any kind. Okay, HPV has a lot of different strains, but the two most common are 16 and 18. The ones not the most common, but the ones most commonly that turns into actual cervical cancer, which is um, why. They have invented the vaccine, the, the Gardasil, um, available for preventing cervical cancer because uh, these strains and a few more that are fairly um, high yield for, for developing cervical cancer. Okay, on the other hand, that's also why women are supposed to do pap smears every year once they become sexually active, is to test for that because it takes a long time, as in 10, 15, 20 years to have the HPV turn into cervical cancer, okay? So with regular pap smears, whether or not you got the, the vaccine, it would, you have plenty of time to, to deal with the issue. It's actually not that difficult to get rid of, okay? Let's move on to lupus or systemic lupus erythromatosis to be more specific, okay? Um, it is, the most common autoimmune disorder and uh, also the most serious uh, autoimmune disorder, okay? And it kind of goes systemic. That's why it's systemic, right? It goes throughout your entire system and affects all sorts of, of places in your body. Um, basically, it's, it's producing a whole bunch of of different kinds of variety of, of autoantibodies and because of that it's affecting all sorts of different um, places in the body and, and how it's manifesting itself whether it's you know just in the in the skin or, or heart or kidneys or wherever so it, it uh, involves a lot of things the the most uh, um, characteristic autoantibodies they're against uh, nucleic acids like the single-stranded DNA and uh, 
also the uh, double-stranded DNA which is a lot more pathognomonic for lupus is the double-stranded DNA but it, it affects you know the, the single-stranded DNA nucleic acids and double-stranded DNA it's also affecting you know histones and ribonu um, ribonucleic proteins and um, all sorts of stuff like that but um, about 98 pe percent of people with lupus or systemic lupus um, they have antibodies that you can find which is why uh, it is so important to look for these double-stranded or anti-nuclear antibodies to ANA um, for testing okay um, so what you have is is again the main things you're talking about is is a problem is kidneys okay so you get renal disease or kidney disease and that's one of the main problems that you end up getting with uh, systemic lupus and um, as far as you know that you can you can also have it affects the brain and the heart and the spleen and lungs and GI tract uh, peritoneum skin as you can see this is what we call a malar rash um, malar rash or butterfly rash that you see and uh, it's very reactive to sunlight okay so that's a problem on that um, obviously there's you know because it's autoimmune it's more active in, in or happens more in women like 10 to 1 as far as women goes uh, usually about 20 to 40 years old and um, autoimmunes you know they, they do tend to come and go so you have a remission and then it'll be worse again that exacerbation okay um, actually uh, blacks are more affected than whites as far as ethnic group goes so they think that there there might be a genetic predisposition for for uh, systemic lupus there's also other things you know like uh, uh, joint pain and swelling or as, as in uh, an arthritis that goes with it in fact uh, uh, it's about 90% of people with lupus actually have that and you get the uh, like I said the, the vasculitis and rash that comes with that um, a huge percentage of people with that thing renal disease like I said uh, blood problems about half the people have some kind of um, blood problems like anemia and then you get cardiovascular disease quite often okay just kind of rattling these things off but uh, but they're there it's pretty much almost every body system is uh, is somewhere in this in this uh, spectrum of the things the signs and symptoms that have, you're affected in uh, in systemic lupus this whole four out of eleven findings okay what that's talking about is that out of these eleven findings with lupus you have to have at least four of them to be able to call it or diagnose it as lupus Okay, so one of them, for example, is the is the malar rash, right? And then you would um, uh, have a also a, a discoid rash they call, and we'll talk about discoid lupus in a minute here. But um, there's also a discoid rash, which is like raised patches and scaling on other parts of the body. Uh, photosensitivity, I already said that about sunlight, and uh, that's another one of them. Um, you can get oral or or ulcers in the nasal pharynx area um, arthritis but it's not erosive arthritis and it has to be at least two different joints that arthritis is one of them so uh, oh, how many is that that's like five um, you get pleurisy is another one or pericarditis is another one the kidney I already said before you can have seizures or psychosis also from lupus so uh, neurologic disorders is is another one of those 11 um, like i said heme disorders or blood disorders so anemia um, something like that uh, also other immune disorders that you could have and um, if you can find the presence of those anti-nuclear antibodies then i think that comes up to 11 different things that you have to um, find okay as far as you know the the I don't have anywhere about cure or anything like that for lupus but uh, 
there is no cure. Like I said, once you get it, you get it. And you can't really, well, you can't, not really, you, you can't get it. What they say is lupus doesn't necessarily kill somebody, but you will die with lupus once you get it. Okay? Um, typically, people are dying from uh, either the treatment, like immunosuppressive drugs, and they catch something else really bad and die from that, or uh, kidney failure is a, is a big problem with, uh, with lupus. Alrighty, um, as far as the treatment goes, um, how they kind of treat it is they try to control the symptoms by giving, you know, NSAIDs or, or corticosteroids or something like that or immunosuppressive drugs to, to suppress the immune system because it's an autoimmune. You obviously have to take care of the, to stay out of the sun and there are some um, IV or intravenous immunoglobulins that uh, are also used uh, for the treatment of systemic lupus. Okay, so here's a, a looks pretty young from this view anyway. Okay, our discoid lupus, I like to think about discoid lupus as kind of like like lupus light. Okay, because what it really is is uh, a a um, just it, it just has this skin. Okay, so it's like systemic lupus except it's limited to the skin um, it can in like five percent of the cases progress to SLE uh, which is the bad one but, but typically you know it's it's supposed to stain the skin um, we think maybe there's some kind of genetic um, component to this thing where you have like a predisposition to it and you know women in their again mostly women in their late 30s or 40s um, are the most commonly affected but it can actually like any autoimmune can hit anybody at any age and I think the pictures actually that we have on the next slide are, are both males but um, as far as you know how it how it comes on I mean it can be you know either acute or subacute or chronic and uh, you can get either single or multiple lesions of different sizes but they're they tend to be on light exposed areas of the skin, um, the face being the most common, and you get that little butterfly pattern just like you do in the SLE, uh, or systemic lupus erythromatosis. Okay, so again, both genetic and environmental factors are probably involved in this, and uh, that's due to some kind of altered immune response, and then there's an antigen that nobody seems to be able to find yet that uh, that affects it as far as you know causing ultraviolet light to to set this thing off uh, they do know there are little lumpy deposits of like IgM that uh, that are found on skin biopsy so exactly what the what the actual causes is a little bit hard to say um, anyway so unlike the SLE this one is uh, more temporary, okay? Where SLE you have forever, the uh, lesions on this thing they they'll they'll be around for months maybe, and then they just resolve on their own or they just atrophy out. Um, but like I said, this one is mostly it's lupus light. It's all the skin things, but not that that's nothing, because you know alopecia is you know you, loss of hair. Uh, you can get that telangiectasias or the little spider veins that we saw earlier. Um, you can get hives um, and Raynaud's phenomena, which is uh, basically what happens is you're, you initially have a vasospasm and you get like really white and numb and cold fingers or digits of any kind really. And then after that vasospasm, then you get cyanosis, which is, you know, the, the blue um, fingertips. And then your body kind of reacts and now it pushes through way too much blood so you get this hyper um, hyperemia which is too much blood just kind of get shoved in there all at the same time so it's um it's kind of a weird little thing the Raynaud's phenomena anyway the as far as the testing goes you know just your immunoglobulins which I already said like the um, the what was it the IgM um, that you tend to see in there okay so, S or DLE, the lupus light, um, 
just try to treat the symptoms and avoid sunlight and it should be okay. Okay, here's a couple of pictures of people with discoid lupus. And that is the end for now.